Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about why we even need to worry about statistical thermodynamics. Why do we need it? What's the purpose of it? Well, it turns out that there's some really good uses for it, and let's show you, let me show you why. First of all, it enables us to predict the properties of an assembly. So it's not so much a matter of calculating the conditions and the properties of an assembly, but to predict. Usually the assembly is a very large quantity of things, and for us to go through each item, each individual item, and calculate it, it's pretty difficult to do. But we can predict on mass, on average, what is the tendency, what is the most probable case, the most likelihood of events happening, and so that's why we use statistical thermodynamics to be able to predict. And so the key word here is the word predict. We can predict based on an assembly, the law of averages, what will happen in the long run if we let things happen for a long enough period of time. What is our prediction that will happen in the end? Okay, we also need statistical thermodynamics, as I explained before, because we're usually dealing with very large numbers. The analysis must be done statistically. Again, we cannot just go and take each part and calculate it. We need to use statistical means to figure out what the states will be like what is the probability of those things happening? We must keep in mind that the numbers typically are in the order of Avogadro's number. We deal with quantities of a mole, uh, like a container with liquid or container with gas, and so the number of elements in there, the number of atoms, the number of molecules, typically are in the order of Avogadro's number, very, very large quantities. We also must keep in mind that we assume that the interaction between the molecules is via collisions. We ignore the van der Waals forces. Now, one of the aspects of van der Waals forces, when molecules get very close together to one another, there's electrostatic forces involved. But if the molecules are far enough apart from one another, or they're in a crystalline lattice, or in some arrangement where the van der Waals forces are not affecting the motion and, the, and what happens to the particles, we can just simply just ignore them. So we typically just ignore the van der Waals forces. And in the vast majority of cases, that's not a problem. Also, statistical thermodynamics provides a means of averaging. So it's all, it's all down to that you could have exceptional cases where the typical outcome is not going to be seen, but the probability of those happening are typically very low. And so on average, over a large period of time, you can say that statistical thermodynamics gives us the solution in terms of the average value, the more typical value we can expect. And that's the reason why we use statistical thermodynamics. So let me uh, show you some simple examples of how this happens. Let's say we have an assembly, and the assembly we tend towards some state. So what we can do is if we combine these two together, here we have kind of the, the theoretical explanation that assemblies, they tend towards what we'd call the most probable state. Another way of saying is they tend to go to the most disorder, the highest disorder. So let's say that we have two possible states we can be in. The likelihood of, let's say we have four quantities, four items in our assembly, four entities as we would call them, in, in our assembly here, it's not very likely that all four of them will be in one state and zero in the other state, especially if the probability that they can be either one of the two states is equal, it's very unlikely to find all of them in one state and none of them in the other. That would, be, that would be called a highly orderly state, not likely to happen. They Assemblies tend towards disorder, the most probable state, and the most probable state would be that you have two in each one, that would be the greatest disorder and the most probable state, and that's why those two tend to go together. Another way of looking at it is that in nature, assemblies tend towards a higher entropy. They try to reach the highest entropy possible. What does that mean, highest entropy? Well, it means that two ways in which we can look at it. We could also look at it in terms of disorder. Higher entropy means greater disorder, which means this is a higher entropy state than this state, so that's another way of looking at it. Or you can say they tend towards thermal equilibrium. Let's say we have two states where we have one state where it's hotter, more heat is contained in that state, and this one is colder, and if we can somehow connect the two so that heat can be exchanged between the two, we can then see that Heat from the hot will go to the cold until they're both at the thermal equilibrium. And again, assemblies tend towards that. They tend towards where the energies of each individual item, each individual entity, is spread out over the whole population, the whole assembly, and therefore it becomes equally shared. And so therefore we find that the distribution of energy then will be kind of equal among all entities. And so if we have a state where 
most of the energy is on one side and not on the other side, they will then begin to exchange that energy until there's a thermal equilibrium. So statistical thermodynamics helps us calculate the probabilities of these things happening. And that's what it's all about. Again, large numbers can't figure out by calculating the energy of each one. We can just average it out and tend to come up with a probability equation that says this is the probability that this state will exist. And that's why we use statistical thermodynamics.